Excellent. Most of us use a keyboard, and for the longest time, buying one was pretty simple. You pay about $15 for a cheap 104 key rubber dome keyboard, and when that one breaks or perhaps becomes too gooey for further use, you recycle it and you buy another one. But over the past five to 10 years, the premium keyboard market has really taken off, thanks largely in part to the use of mechanical switches that last way longer than rubber dome switches, have a much more satisfying feel while typing, and it also comes in a variety of flavors that determine key press resistance, clickiness, and whether or not there's a little tactile bump on each key as you push it down. G-Skill, known to many of you as a memory maker, is the latest manufacturer to dive into the extremely competitive and fairly crowded mechanical keyboard market with the Ripjaws KM780 RGB gaming keyboard that we're taking a look at today. It's available with genuine Cherry MX red or brown switches, looking at the brown version that we have here, and if the $160 selling price is a little bit rich for your blood, there's also a version called the Ripjaws KM780 MX, which has red backlighting, and it's only $120 MSRP. But no RGB, um, all the other features remain the same. Now the first thing you might notice when taking a look at the KM780 is the gamery design. gamer -y, that's a word. Especially when compared to Corsair's keyboards, for example, which are much more squared off and industrial looking, the angular style and aggressive lines just scream, this is the look we think gamers are into. And who knows, they could be right. I'm more of a function over form guy myself, so I will leave it up to you to decide if you like the look, and feel free to let G-Skill and me know what you think in the comments section down below. While I'm on the topic of YouTube feedback, feel free to hit that like button too if you enjoy this video. Back to functions though, uh, let's start off with the stuff around the edges. It's got USB 2.0 pass-through, uh, which is a feature that I really like on a keyboard, whether it's to daisy chain your mouse to it or to act as a conveniently accessible port for flash drives. There's also an analog mic and headphone pass-through, as well as an option switch to go between N key and 6 key rollover modes, which can be very helpful if you're having trouble getting the keyboard to talk nice with your motherboard, especially in pre-operating system situations like changing settings in your UEFI or BIOS. You of course get full N key rollover and anti-ghosting, which is to be expected for a keyboard that costs as much as this one does. And then moving to the top of the keyboard, there's a set of uh, six programmable macro buttons along the left side. Up top, there's a dedicated macro record button next to the three profile select options, windows lock and brightness buttons. And there's a timer button there, which will work with G-Skills software, which we'll take a look at in just a moment. On the right top side, there are media controls, which are always nice to have. A volume roller wheel cylinder thing, which I also like having there, despite not knowing exactly what to call it and an LED volume display. These are all great features and you don't always get them with high-end mechanical keyboards. I just wish that the LEDs for the media controls and that volume indicator were RGB as well instead of just solid red. Or just give us the ability to turn them off in the software G skills so that they don't clash with our super sweet RGB lighting schemes that we set up. Now I have to give G-Skill a lot of credit for the build quality of the KM780. It's very sturdy thanks in part to the functional and visually appealing reinforced metal pipe that goes all the way around the outside. You can use this to attach the included accessory box. It also holds the foldable cable holder right up here on the top right. Uh, that will hold your mouse cable to control the slack in the mouse, which honestly is a simple yet very, very nice feature. I was thinking that uh, also if you had maybe a hook on your wall or something and you like to keep your setup really clean when you're not using it, you could maybe use that wraparound pipe to like hang the keyboard up when you're not using it. Who knows, just a thought. Finally, there's a black brushed aluminum metal top plate. That's the cover that goes uh, between the keys and the actual keyboard. And I prefer this style to the recessed top plate that you see in some keyboards, since it's just way easier to clean and get down in there between the keys. As for accessories, you get a detachable soft touch wrist rest, which is nice and comfy, comfy and optional if you don't like what wrist rests. Uh, 10 extra gaming keycaps as well, uh, and that will help you Find the WASD keys, for example, since they're angled and a little bit more texture on those. You can swap those out, and then you can keep them in this little case when you're not using them. The case also snaps onto the edge of the uh, little pipe around the outside, so you can store it there. Or if you don't want to keep the keep caps in there, maybe keep something else in there. Snacks. It's always nice to have snacks. Now, I believe I've already pointed out that the KM780 has per key RGB backlighting. That's kind of the point of an RGB mechanical switch keyboard, but all the keys are also fully programmable, and G-Skill does provide a downloadable software to control all of these functions in their G-Skill unified driver system. Let's take a look at the most recent version of this software next. 
Here's a look at the software, guys. Uh, software is up top. I also have an image of the keyboard down on the bottom. Uh, bear in mind, as you're watching this, there's a flicker on the backlighting of the keyboard. That is not apparent when you're looking at it. That's just the recording, because they're recording at a certain frames per second, and it's refreshing at certain frames per second. And it leads to a flicker in the recording. Anyway, uh, the software. Uh, up here on the top left, you've got your macros button and your lighting profiles. So consider these two top buttons, um, the buttons where you go and kind of set up uh, macros the way you want them. You can also you can record macros. Uh, you can you can add them here. You name them, and then they're available via drop down. You can get rid of them with the delete or with the trash can button, and then you can also copy, import, or export macros as well. Uh, you can also do a delay, no delay, record button, and it all appears over there, and it's pretty functional as a lot of macro recording utilities are. You can also do text macros as well, so uh, if you just want to punch a button to type in some text, you can do that too. Uh, moving on to the lighting profiles area, here's where we have access to um, kind of the, the special lighting features if you don't just want like standard lighting to be on all the time. Uh, you have a wave option, a ripple option, a reactive option, which means as you hit a button, it's going to spread out from there, and a breathing option. But bear in mind that as you're over here, when you're messing with these and doing them and stuff, it's saving these to the software, but then these uh, buttons up here, customize, settings, and lighting, are where you actually go to implement them. So just bear that in mind. So for instance, if we wanted to create a wave setting, we'd hit plus, create wave two, and then we could go in here and mess around with the colors that if we wanted. Um, you can like add other areas to the wave and drag them around with this little guy here or you know change the, the level of brightness and that kind of thing. So it's pretty, I mean it's pretty functional. You can you can move stuff around a lot. So like here, let's make a wave that goes from red to white to yellow to green to blue. Wave two, and after you do everything, it saves it immediately. That's another thing that, that uh, I think G-Skill could uh, help themselves out with here is doing something that uh, like says apply or okay or something like that. Anyway, it uh, works the same way with ripples uh, or reactive typing, although reactive typing you only get to choose one color, and then breathing, and you can have it breathe between multiple colors as well. So we've just done that wave thing, so let's go over here to lighting, uh, and once we're on the, any of the lighting setting or customize, you'll see the actual profiles over here on the left side and different modes you can choose. So we're in mode two, uh, we want to do effect lighting, so we click effect lighting, and then it asks us which of the effects we want to do. So I'm going to choose that wave two that I just created, and hit OK, and then it should it should immediately pop up there if I did it right, but maybe I maybe I didn't do it right. Uh, this is a bug that I have encountered once or twice, and uh, I seem to be able to bypass it by clicking disable lighting, and then re-enabling lighting again, and then it pops up. Okay, so um, as already kind of alluded to, this software it still seems like it needs a little bit of work from G Skill. But uh, you can't get it to work. Sorry. There, there's a little wave function. Uh, if you wanted to just individually assign the different keys, you can do that as well. So you can like choose a color down here and just start plugging away at uh, whatever you want to do. Oh, right now I have it to set to all. So uh, all are single. Now it's set to single. So I can choose specific keys that I want to light up that color. Choose them here. Or you can even drag and get a grouping of them. Let's, let's scatter some blue in here as well. There's some blue. And now we want pink. This is a very specific keyboard layout that's designed for people who uh, switch between MMOs, MOBAs, and uh, flight sims. And uh, this is a very, very popular layout. Anyway, so as you can see, selecting keys, all that kind of stuff, uh, it just lights stuff up the way, the way that you would assume it would light it up. Um, apart from that, let's look at the other uh, lighting effects that are available. So back over here, profiles, uh, you got your ripple. So there's Ripple 1 right there. Uh, let's go back to lighting and check out what that looks like. Um, we go to effect lighting and we choose the Ripple and then there's our Ripple 1 and then we hit OK. And it's dark again. I'm going to disable and re-enable. And there it is. Um, what does the Ripple do? Oh, look at that. It's kind of fun. you got to type a key. And then, it, and then it Ripple expands out from wherever you type. That's interesting. I, I'm kind of curious if you're typing fast. I must confuse it a little bit. It's, that's still kind of fun. Uh, anyway, moving back to reactive is uh, pretty, pretty, it's pretty standard uh, reactive typing. But let's uh, check that out real quick. Um, moving to reactive, try reactive one. Do that disable and re-enable re thing again. And then whenever you type, whenever you hit a key, it gives you a little, you know, it it, it expands out from there. Um, pretty cool effect there as well. Uh, and then one last lighting uh, thing that you can do just to show you 
is breathing. Breathing effect, and that's uh, that's very popular, so let's choose that. And there, now it's breathing. All one color. And of course, uh, in the lighting, lighting profiles, you can adjust different things like the breathing for how long the duration is and what colors it breathes between and all that good stuff. So there's a pretty good amount of customization you can do in here for sure. Uh, there's just some quirks here and there. You can kind of tell the software is still uh, in its earlier stages. Um, but I like the different modes you can assign. You can also do a bunch of different profiles. Uh, you can create more uh, profiles here than actually available in the different modes. Um, but the modes, you can do one, two, and three, and then those are specifically matched up with the mode keys at the top. So jumping to mode three right there, you can see immediately reflects in the software, and now mode three is, uh, is popping up as well. This is my uh, lightning ripple effect, by the way. It's, this is the, this is the uh, or I'm sorry, the wave, my, my wave effect with a one second thing, which is very, it's very fast, very frenetic. But uh, there's a quick rundown, guys, of the software. Um, again, Functional, but uh, could use a little bit of updating, maybe. Oh, and then I, I can't forget the settings menu as well, where you can adjust uh, your more your more basic stuff that you might expect, such as polling rate, end key rollover, alert mode, sleep mode, repeat rate acceleration, and repeat delay. So to wrap this review up, let's compare the KM782 offerings from Corsair. The competition. Offerings from the competition, Corsair being primary among the competitors, of course, since up through last year, they had an exclusive deal with Cherry and were the only providers of RGB backlit Cherry MX keyboards. As of the making of this video, you could get the Corsair K70 for $170, the G-Skill KM780 for $160, or the new Corsair Strafe for $150, all mechanical Cherry MX RGB backlit keyboards. The K70 has media controls, but it does not have a USB or audio pass-through, whereas the Strafe does have that USB pass-through, but no dedicated media controls, so it's a trade-off. Then there's the design, which is subject to your preference, and finally, the software comparison between Corsair would win, in my opinion. The Corsair software versus the G-Skill. The Corsair software has just been around a lot longer. It's more developed. Uh, even though it's got a learning curve, there's just more you can do with it. So the final verdict is that the KM780 provides excellent build quality, a great feature set, and capable if not ideal software with some rough edges that G-Skill could work to improve over time. It's great to see some more competition for the likes of Corsair and Razer in the high-end keyboard space, and who knows, maybe we'll even see the pricing drop a bit over time. Probably not, but who knows. If you're in the market for a premium mechanical RGB keyboard, the KM780 warrants serious consideration, and hopefully this video helps you make your choice. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Feel free to visit my store at store.paulshardware.net where you can support me by picking up a shirt or a mug or a pint glass. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tech videos. And as always, thank you for watching.